statement, then we'll, we'll introduce Coach Bobo, and Coach Bobo will speak for a minute, and then we'll take some questions for Bobo. How y'all doing? All right, doing good. Just to update some roster information. Uh, obviously, Jake Bentley's going to grad transfer to, to Utah, and we had a great conversation. You know, his contributions here were immense, and two-time captain, and uh, how he represented the University of South Carolina. Uh, really appreciate everything. He wanted a new opportunity, and we wish him the best. And I know he'll be extremely successful in whatever he does. Kyle Markway, um, you know, Kyle's graduated. He is now in grad school. And really, as we looked for the, got the information from the NFL people, there was not going to be a lot of difference between where his draft status is now as opposed to how it would be after if he came back for another fall. He's been a very productive player for us the last two years, has been a model citizen in our program. I wish he had come back, but certainly certainly want what he wants. And, they, and they, he wanted to, to look at this opportunity, and we wish him the best. He did uh, first class in everything he did here at the University of South Carolina, and we appreciate him. Uh, today was a great day. We honored 14 guy, December grads at our ring ceremony, Kobe Smith, Brian Edwards, Kiel Pollard, T.J. Brunson, Javon Kinlaw, A.J. Turner, Jake Bentley, uh, Michael Allman, uh, D.J. Warnham, Rico Dowdle, Danny Fennell, who finished his master's degree, uh, and Will Tommy, and two other guys that have another year of eligibility. There, you got your cell phone on. All right, uh, another year of eligibility, Sedarius Hutchinson and Kier uh, Thomas. So that's impressive. With those 14 along with the 11 uh, before the season, 25 – Guys have had their diploma either before they started their senior year or as they're finishing their eligibility, which is a, a great statement of what we're doing academically. Maria Hickman, who started this process at the Donnie Anderson uh, facility, she does a fantastic job. And now Katie Christians now has kind of taken over that role as Maria has moved into a different position uh, in the athletic department. I want to welcome Mike Bobo as our offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, his family, his wife Lainey, his two sons Drew and Jake, his daughters Olivia, Kate, and Ava. That's five children. Five. Five children, triplets, Jake, Olivia, and Kate. I uh, also want to welcome his dad, Coach George Bobo, who will be an advisor to me uh, in an unpaid role. Uh, but will certainly will give me a lot of advice on what we need to be doing all the time. Uh, but a lot of respect for Mike. Number one as a person, number two as a play caller. Uh, in his 14 years as Colin plays, he's averaged over 30 points right at 425 yards a game, which is in the most difficult defense as far as some of the facing some of the defenses you're going to face and the uh, you know adjustments he made when we went to Colorado State. But a coordinator and a quarterback coach, and excited to have him on board. Thank you, Coach. Uh, definitely excited to be here in South Carolina. Excited to be back in the South. Uh, excited about this opportunity to, uh, to be with Coach Muschamp uh, and this staff here at South Carolina. You know, got in uh, the beginning last week, uh, a little little less than a week ago, and just really, first of all, just blown away uh, with the things that they've done here at South Carolina, the facilities, and just a first-class facility. And you know, really hit the ground running. Uh, got to go see a few recruits with Coach, and uh, now we're settling in a little bit, uh, starting to look at personnel. But uh, you know, had the opportunity to come here and work with Coach. I think the world uh, of him uh, and, and his family, him as a person, and going against him uh, all those years uh, in this conference. Uh, sometimes the field, you know, seemed 200 yards and 100 yards. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited about uh, the roster that we have here. Uh, I've taken a few days and, and looked at that roster. There's a lot of work to do, like there's a lot of work to, to do at every place every year, uh, this time of year. And I'm excited about the challenge that we have uh, here at South Carolina and look forward uh, to this upcoming offseason. Questions? Hey, Mike, uh, you, you mentioned that you've already had a chance to look over your personnel and your roster. Uh, just what do you see out of them that can fit your general philosophy of running an offense? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, general philosophy for, for me, uh, and I think it, it – I not think, I know it uh, aligns with – with, with coaches' uh, philosophy is, uh, you know, we want, we want to be a physical football team. Uh, we want to be able to run the football. I believe you have to run the football uh, in this league uh, to be successful and contend for, contend for a championship. Uh, but at the same time, we want to have balance. We want to be able to spread people out. Uh, and looking at this roster, uh, you know, I think that's what we're in the process right now of trying to figure out what the best personnel groups are to attack uh, you know, the teams that we're going to play this year, what gives us the best chance to be successful as an offense. And that's something that, uh, you know, you obviously uh, work through uh, during spring practice. 
Uh, you obviously work through during fall camp when you get an influx of freshmen, and sometimes that can change from spring to fall. It just depends on, you know, the guys that you've got coming in, the guys knock on wood that stay healthy. Uh, but you got to be willing to adapt as a as a as a as a coach, uh, and that's what we're talking through right now. And it's going to align what gives us the best chance to be successful uh, as a team, not really as an offense, as a team. Uh, Mike, what kind of college stories can you tell us about Will Muschamp? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, just, hey, well, I don't want to say any because he can tell something about me. <laughs> Mike, um, after after uh, being a head coach, did you have any reservations about jumping right back in it, or did you know that hey, if the right opportunity comes up, I want to be part. I want to be back in the game. Yeah, I, I didn't have any reservations. I, I want to coach. Uh, you know, I'm excited to just you know, get back on the grass. I'm excited about being in a room and, and having a position uh, to myself and, and, and really, you know, building a relationship with a, with, with some individuals uh, at the quarterback room. Uh, and we were a couple of days here, and it was, you know, I'd got the quick tour and everybody had left, and I was going around kind of FaceTiming my kids and, and showing them this facility. And I got on the phone with my wife, and she goes, you hadn't sounded this excited in three years. And I, I, I'm just I'm, – I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to, you know, not have to walk out of that meeting room and grab that phone and the head coach call you get all the time. you got to go out and answer a bunch of stuff. I'm excited about coaching football and recruiting and building a relationship with these players. Uh, you know, but uh, never – I, I if, you know, if I didn't have the right opportunity, I was going to go somewhere and, and work. I wasn't going to sit out uh, for a year. One, my, one, I would be divorced if I stayed at home. My wife wouldn't like that too much. Uh, like since your since your name was linked to the job, people started talking about the relationship you've had with with Will. Obviously, dating back to college and then BMAC. What can you say about that rapport you guys have? With well, I think the room is important. Uh, obviously, you want to work. You know, it's you know it's all about who you work for. Uh, in really any profession, you know, you want to go to work with people that you trust. Uh, you know, that are going to do things the right way, and that's the respect I have for Will of of, of how he's done things over his career and where he's been. I uh, hadn't had a chance to work with Will, but I've had guys that have worked with him uh, and talk about what he, what a great job he does as a head coach of being demanding but also letting you grow uh, as a coach. And we all need that. We all need somebody to hold us accountable and push us and, and uh, you know, to be our very best, but also at the same time give you the freedom, you know, to grow and, and, and try try different things. So I'm excited about doing that. Uh, obviously in that room, I've, I've coached two of those guys and Coach McClendon and, and Coach Brown. Uh, I worked with Coach McClendon side by side for I believe eight years uh, at the University of Georgia. I think the world of both of those guys. Those are two guys that you know worked extremely hard as players. Did everything you asked. Uh, they were team guys, and now they they do a great job. Uh, you know, coaching. Uh, I got to be around them this weekend while they were recruiting, and and be around them with their families and how they interacted with families. Uh, and it's the type of atmosphere that you that you want to be with. I've had a chance with. Uh, to meet with Coach Wolf before uh, and talk some football you know, about three or four years ago. I uh, was impressed with him, and I've known Coach Bentley for a long time. So I'm excited about that room. That's always got a lot to do with it when you're you know you're deciding to go somewhere is what type of room are you going to walk in. And we're already in there meeting right now, and I, I, I feel great about it. Yeah, Mike, two questions for you. Number one, how much control of the offense is yours? And number two, from your early evaluation of the quarterback room, what do you see in there? Uh, you know, I mean, there's one head coach, and that's that's Coach Muschamp. And, you know, we're going to put together a plan for us to be successful. But, uh, you know, I'm an offensive coordinator, and he's trusted me into, into you know, getting our staff ready uh, on the same page and our staff ready to, to teach our concepts to our players and go out and execute them on game day. Uh, and accountability, you know, you know, is going to be is going to be on me. But there's going to be certain things that, you know, as a head coach, that you know, you're, you're going to you're going to demand of your program. And I think that's us being physical and tough. And but as far as you know, me worrying about coach getting on the headphones and and you know saying run this or run that, I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, that's football. Uh, you know, it's it's game day, and we're going to be out there coaching. And you know, he expected me to he hired me to do a job and. You know, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, as far as our quarterback situation, I've watched about seven games right now, uh, starting from the back, moving forward, and not just quarterbacks, trying to watch all the personnel uh, of all the guys. I've got a chance to meet Ryan and talk to Ryan. 
since he stayed here and had his, uh, you know, his, his little knee surgery and cleaned up his meniscus. Uh, I'm excited about him. Uh, I see a guy that's got some talent. I see a guy that, you know, went through some growing pains being a freshman. Uh, and we got to do things to help him, uh, you know, and that's, you know, some of that is the run game and some of that is, you know, protection. But, uh, you know, had a chance to sit down with him on three occasions already. And, you know, he's going to be here. His family lives here now. So we're, we're starting that process right now of building a relationship uh, with him. Uh, got a chance to meet DK. Uh, really impressed with him. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, wants to do whatever he can to help this football team. That was the first words out of his mouth. It wasn't, I need to play quarterback, I need to do this. And as coach, I want to help this football team. I want to do whatever it takes to help this team be successful. And uh, just love the look uh, uh, in that kid's eye. Uh, I'm excited about seeing him, you know, this, this offseason, you know, in offseason conditioning. And then when we get in into spring ball um, and then had a chance to meet Jay, uh, briefly, so those are the three guys I've met. Uh, I probably spent more time with Ryan just because he's still here in town. You talked a little about getting on the road, recruiting a little bit. Just how did that go last week, and how nice is it to kind of be back in Georgia and able to recruit that area? Uh, it, it was good. It was good uh, to be back, uh, you know, in the South. When we recruited the South heavy uh, at Colorado State, everybody recruits, uh, you know, Georgia heavily. Uh, you know, and there are good players in this state. I was telling Will the other day, every every time we ever signed a player out of this state, they were players for us at, at, at the University of Georgia. And I'm excited about the guys that we have, you know, in this state. And we're always going to recruit the, the neighboring states. But just to go out and, you know, talk to these guys. Some of these guys, you know, I already knew who they were and formed relationships with briefly early on in the recruiting process. And they, you know, they, you know, accumulated some more offers and, and, and didn't have interest where I was before. But, uh, it's all about, you know, trying to build relationships with these guys, and that's hard when you come in the last week. So, really, I'm just telling them who I am and what I'm about and, uh, you know, trying to lay it out for them that I'm going to be, you know, the same guy every day. Uh, I'm going to be genuine. I'm going to be real. I'm going to coach you hard, uh, and I'm going to put my arm around you. But uh, just trying to lay out what to expect of me when they get here. Hey, Mike, um, how have you changed as a, an offensive caller and <laughs> – how important is change in college football now, or can you win kind of being traditional? No, I think that's a great question. Uh, you know, when I went to Colorado State, uh, you know, we didn't have, you know, Ty Gurley, Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle. Uh, you know, there's a lot of backs that we had. Uh, and, you know, when you're – we had some good players, and we, we evolved there uh, at the University of Georgia as the game game evolves. Uh, you know, when Coach Rick turned it over to me and changing some things of what we did offensively and spreading guys out a little bit more. But when going to Colorado State, you had to do different things uh, to move the football. Uh, a lot of your best players were receiver-type guys and, and trying to find ways to get them the ball, whether it's handing it to them, uh, more screen game, just being a little bit more innovative in the run game. Uh, and it was good for me. It was really, really good for me of having to change and work with, you know, when maybe you're undersized up front or maybe you didn't have that that back that, uh, you know, could could consistently break tackles and find ways to get guys in space and really work more on matchups uh, of trying to get guys the ball. So I'm excited about it. And that's what we're trying to do right now is figure out, you know, who are some guys that, uh, you know, we feel like they can make some plays in space and, you know, what, what's uh, our best chance moving forward with our offensive line to give us success? What's the best running game? You know, whether it's, you know, are we a zone team or are we a pin and pull team like they were last year on the film that I've seen. I want to be able to do a lot of things, uh, but I want to be able to do what we do good. So uh, a lot of it's going to depend on what our kids can handle. Uh, there's a fine line of too much scheme and not enough scheme. Uh, they got to walk on that field and they got to believe in what we're doing offensively so they can execute and play fast. But at the same time, you can't be so simple that defenses can attack you. We want to attack defenses. Um, and it's hard It's hard playing defense nowadays. It is with everything that offenses are allowed to do and, you know, tempo and uh, the RPO game and, you know, just 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 what you're allowed to do offensively. And we got to take advantage of some of those rules. Uh, but again, it's got to it's got to fit our personnel where we can we can play fast. Mike, I'm, I'm sure you had other opportunities. What made South Carolina the right fit for you and, and Coach Muschamp? If you want to comment, what what made Mike the the right guy to, to hire, and how how quickly did that come together for you guys? Well, I, I'm excited about coming to a place that 
is I really believe on the verge. I know last year wasn't what you know uh, Coach and his staff you know expects out of this program and are striving for. But the the pieces are here from a, from a great staff. Uh, to a great foundation of players. I really like that uh, you know, you've got eight starters, return, eight guys that have started up front on the offensive line. You've got a young quarterback uh, that's got talent. Uh, and then I believe you, you, a place that is hungry. Uh, I've always been impressed when you come over here and play the passion uh, that this fan base has and the energy in this stadium. And that, you know, that – that carries over to your players. Uh, you know, I think, Will, you told me the last championship was 1969. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. ACC championship in 1969. You know, I want to be a part of a place that, uh, you know, gets it turned around and, and, and a place you could be a long time. It's a great place to, for me to move my family. Uh, and it's a great place where I think we can be successful. And I had to have both of those. I wouldn't have gone to a place if I didn't think we could be successful and compete and a great place for my family to live. You know, John, I just think, you know, I pinpointed Mike from the beginning. I talked to, you know, several people in the process, but Mike was obviously, uh, you know, his situation didn't really know where that was going to go at Colorado State and, uh, you know, for whatever reason fell the right way for us at South Carolina. And, and uh, you know, just personally have had tremendous respect for him as a play caller and what he presents to you defensively. Uh, and then to watch what he's done at Colorado State, which he's changed a lot as far as what he's you did at the University of Georgia, and that's what I think really good coaches do is they adapt to where they are and, and what their, you know, what their what their players can do. And I think that's what I've seen, and I'm really excited about what they're going to put together here offensively. This is going back to the relationship between you two as you've gone your separate ways during your coaching careers. How many times a year did maybe you talk to each other? Uh, bounce some ideas off one another, or maybe just seek well, some advice. We're always competing, so we didn't bounce any ideas. I can tell you that. <laughs> and one year he was at Miami. We were able to catch him a couple times, and his, <laughs> he, I remember, he had a hurricane coming through, and and uh, <laughs> Coach Searles, who was my offensive line, our offensive line coach at the time, we were there late, and let's call Will, uh, and I can't remember who we were playing, but it was somebody similar scheme. And he was said he was sweating, but he's you know sweating down in whatever room he was in. We <laughs> talked to him about thirty minutes uh, about uh, you know some things we had planned for third down. But you know when you're competing against each other, it, you know you don't talk much. You'll you'll text each other and say good job, proud of you, or you know keep your head up. You know we all you know we all played you know together. We've known each other for a long time. We all in you know into coaching, and you've got a lot of you know coaching is you know you're competing like hell against those guys. You know, but we all know what we go through uh, at the same time and how hard it is, you know, to win each and every Saturday. And, uh, you know, you just try to be there for them. And, um, and I'm excited about being here with him uh, moving forward. Uh, Mike, what kind of goes on the to-do list for you between now and the start of spring practice? Uh, I gotta, I gotta fill out this background check form. It's due today, but <laughs> they're on me about that. I gotta <laughs> fill that out. Uh, you know, to do list uh, for me uh, is number one. It was getting on the, getting on the road and seeing the guys that Coach Muschamp wanted me to see. Uh, number two is, you know, having a chance to get around some of the players that uh, were in town for the banquet and meet some of those guys and try to put, you know, a face with a number. Right now I've just watched some games and I've seen numbers and, and meet some of those guys and just tell them how excited I am. not really getting any uh, scheme stuff with those guys yet. Uh, now it's getting around, getting around the staff. We're going to be in, you know, this week and – you know, working on recruiting 2021 guys and 2022 guys, identifying those guys. You know, a lot of guys that are on the board were, you know, they were a little higher up than guys that I was recruiting at Colorado State. So I got, you know, a lot of names are familiar, but I've got to go familiarize myself with these recruits. So uh, I'm back in a league where things happen a lot faster than where they happen at Colorado State recruiting wise. So I've got to get caught up and start to build relationships with these 2021 guys. And then, you know, we're working as a staff, uh, you know, right now, kind of recruiting in the morning, football and afternoon, and start to talk about, you know, what we're going to do offensively and, you know, throw ideas back and forth. And, you know, because we start spring practice February 26th, you know, so it's, uh, you know, two months away. Uh, you know, coach asked if, you know, we need to move it back any, but I think that's plenty enough time to get ready uh, as a staff and present this to the players and, and get working. But, you know, there's something, you know, every day, you know, we'll have a, you know, a week or two off here for Christmas. And, but I'll be, you know, I'll be watching a lot of recruits and trying to get, 
trying to get uh, you know what we're going to do offensively nailed down on paper after this week meeting with the staff. Uh, Mike, you mentioned being able to play to the strengths of the guys that you have, being able to, to use what, they, what they're capable of doing. When, you're, when you come here and fans obviously know the style of play that you had over at Colorado State, how much of it's going to be trying to be able to get ready for the spring and being able to show them, OK, we're going to be able to figure out that's the way we're going to play? Or is it going to be more so? Show the who? The fans? Just show the, 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 the style. The players or the fans? To show the style that you're going to play. Because I think fans anticipate seeing how you did at Colorado um, State. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we'll show the fans when we get ready to play, you know, next next year, the first game against against Coastal. I think a lot can happen between, you know, spring ball and the influx of freshmen. Uh, you know, right now, you know, we're, we're going to try to get better fundamentally in the spring, you know. Uh, you know, and I've talked to Ryan about this, and I don't, you know, feel bad about saying he's got to get better fundamentally as a quarterback. Um, and, you know, part of playing that position is being fundamentally sound. Uh, and it doesn't matter any, what style that you play. If you're not fundamentally good at that position, you're not going to have a chance to be successful uh, at that position. And, you know, so we're going to work hard on fundamentals and doing the little things right. And I think our style will come out as our identity of our foot, offensive football team uh, develops through spring and through summer and through fall camp. Uh, you, know, you know, whatever it takes for us to move the ball and not turn it over and put points on the board – that's going to be our style. And I think, you know, if you've watched, you know, or looked at offenses that, you know, I've coordinated over the years, it's been, you know, some years it's been, you know, a lot of 11 personnel, three three receivers, one tight end, one back. It's been two backs. It's been 12, two tight ends, two receivers. You know, one year, last year there, uh, I mean, we were had a lot of 22 personnel because we were very successful throwing the ball. So we adapted, you know, midway and started going – 20 some 22 just to be successful I don't I'm not going to beat my head against the wall because I think this is a great scheme if we don't have the players or they don't to be successful at it or we don't understand it yet uh, you know the base philosophy is we want to be balanced uh, we want to run the ball you know we want to play with a tight end and have a tight inside running game and a play action game but at the same time you know, we got to get the guys that we identify as playmakers. We got to get them the ball in their hands, and that's you know that's one possession. Quite quite frankly, you lose two running backs, uh, you lose two receivers. Number eighty nine, uh, Edwards, right? Brian, Brian. Edwards was a heck of a player. Uh, so we're gonna have some young guys playing. Uh, at those positions, but I do believe you can have young guys come in and play at the running back position and the receiver position uh, and be successful early on. Um, you know, let's see. You know what happens after signing day? Who comes in mid year? Who we sign in the net? You know, I can't get into all that right now of who we sign, but you know that's going to play a big part uh, in our offense too because we've got to replace some skill on this offense uh, to be productive. Coach, obviously you transitioned from OC to head coach the last time around, but what is the biggest adjustment for you going back to OC from a head coach where you have a lot of responsibilities? Obviously, you still have a lot, but um, it's kind of a different role in, in a role yeah, you have Yeah, I, well, I, I, was, I was still the play caller uh, at Colorado State, and uh, – you know, I had an offensive coordinator by, by title that ran the meetings when I weren't wasn't in there. But, you know, every every day I was in that offensive meeting and, and ran it like an offensive coordinator. I just had to walk in that meeting and say, look, guys, I'm not the head coach right now. I'm the offensive coordinator because sometimes they won't say things in front of a head coach like they would in front of the other coaches. So I said, you know, I'm leaving it at the door. You can We can talk like we normally do in a room. Uh you know, so I, I don't think that'll be much of a, a, a change uh, for me. You know, I think I'll get to spend more time uh, with the offense. I think I'll get more time with the quarterback, developing a relationship, working on those little things. I mean, there's a ton of things that we can do before we even start spring ball when we have the time where we can work on things without a ball, with footwork. And, you know, those are some things that I didn't have as much time as a head coach. I had a quarterback coach doing that that I'll be able to uh, invest in uh, – as just the OC. Mike, a couple for you. Just uh, how are you physically after that the health scare a couple of years ago? Yeah, I'm I'm doing great. Uh, I had a had a as you probably all read had an autoimmune disease, and um, you know my respiratory and I'm on you know some medications, but I feel really really good uh, with that. Uh, when that disease hit me, it uh, caused some nerve damage, uh, which we diagnosed as 
peripheral neuropathy, but has some nerve damage in you know both legs and my right arm. Uh, fully functional in, in everything right now. I just have some some numbness in the bottom of my feet, but I'm you know I'm able to get on my toes now. I'm able to jog a little bit now. So it's it's just you know they say uh, you know it's a millimeter a day, and it's the truth. If I look at you know day to day, I feel like maybe I'm not getting any better, better. But I look at where I was at the beginning of the season, from the middle, the middle to the start. It's uh, a, a lot of improvement, and I feel really good about it. And what would you say is the biggest thing you learned as a head coach that you're taking into this position? Uh, I, I, I gained probably a little bit more patience as a head coach. Uh, not to say that I'm still not going to be who I am and, and fiery and coach guys a little bit hard, but I, I you know, I, I've, I learned that you had to build a lot more relationships. I was probably a little more relationship driven as a head coach. When you're a, when you're a play caller or a coordinator, you're kind of zeroed in and you know, coach the X's and O's a little bit too much instead of building that relationship. And I really believe relationships matter uh, to get the best out of that young man to help him reach all his goals. And that's, you know, uh, letting him know who you are as well as finding out who he is. And that takes time, you know, more not just time in the film room, but, you know, time over meals, time over to your house. Uh, you, know, I, you know, that was probably the one thing. Uh, that I learned the most uh, from that experience. And then after I went through, I went through uh, two years ago, I appreciate those relationships a lot more and being able to do what I get to do. Uh, Mike, can you describe historically your process for game planning for Will Muschamp defenses and then Will the opposite? Quit, where are you at? I can't ask that question again. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, just what was your process? My process, uh, you know, it's pretty much the same for for everybody. You know, you turn on the tape of of coaches' defenses. They played hard. Uh, they were very aggressive. Uh, they wanted to put pressure on the quarterback and make him uncomfortable. Uh, they didn't give up big plays, so you knew you had to be sound. And if you have a chance to have, make an explosive play, uh, you wanted to capitalize on it. You were trying to find ways to maybe get some explosives, which they were very good at not giving up explosives. But anytime I game plan, you know, I'm you know I'm looking at what we do, uh, what's our you know our things that we do every game, and different ways to run those different sets. You know, what are certain personnel groups or certain formations where we don't get a lot of looks, and we can teach our guys that hey, we're going to get these two looks or we're going to get these two coverage. I try to break it down for the quarterback, uh, you know, where he goes in the game and feels confident about it. And then, you know, we're going to put a lot of stuff up there, you know, early on the week, and it's going to dwindle down as the week goes on. What I feel comfortable that our kids can run and go out there and execute that they believe in than what I feel comfortable the quarterback has confidence in. You know, there's been a lot of – early in my career, there were a lot of things I felt good about and I'd carry into a game and – you know, we really couldn't execute that well in practice, but I knew it was a good scheme or the quarterback didn't really like it, but I'd call it anyway because I was stubborn. But now I'm more, you know, what can our kids do and believe in? And that's what we're going to take in the game. Bottom line is you guys got to believe in what you're doing. There's a ton of different ways to move the ball, a ton of different ways to be effective offensively. How do you get your guys to buy in and believe in that? And, you know, that's to me that's through repetition, you know, doing it over and over. Uh, where we feel confident we go out there and we see this front, we see this coverage, we know how we're going to react to it and execute our plays versus that, that, what the defense is doing. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, from, from a recruiting standpoint it, at the quarterback position, what are some of the chief things that you look for when deciding whether or not you want to offer a kid? Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys out there now that can throw the football. You know, more and more guys are throwing the football in high school. Uh, they're, they're a lot more advanced of what they do. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, coaches in, in high school do, do an outstanding job of developing quarterbacks and schematically doing a ton of things. So when you turn on the tape, you know, there's a lot of guys that can throw, throw that football. Uh, number one is I want to see that – I want to go see that guy in person and see him throw the ball in person, uh, see how the ball comes off his hand, his release – uh, you know, I want to look at his, you know, his, his, his feet, you know, what kind of balance does he have, what kind of athletic ability he has. And then you got to find out if, if he's got it, you know, and there's, you know, you've heard it a thousand times, but to me, it is, it, what it is, is when he walks in the huddle, not just the 10 guys believe in him, but those, you know, 85, 95 guys on the sideline believe this is the guy too. Uh, and, you know, 
there's a lot of guys that can go out and throw seven on seven and go to these quarterback gurus and do all these drops and look good shuffling through bags. But does he have it when he walks out there that the guys believe that this guy can get it done? And that's, you know, it's harder and harder to find out nowadays because you're having to offer out guys earlier and earlier. You know, the key is you like to get them into camp and you like to work with them. You like to, you know, you got to talk to a lot of people. And then I want to, I want guys that are winners. I want guys that are winners that play on uh, championship football teams that, you know, that their coaches, you know, say this is the guy that, you know, we won this championship because of him. You know, he's a leader. He's the guy. He's got it. He don't mind getting on somebody's getting in somebody's ass. He doesn't mind, you know, putting his arm around and and, and pulling the guy's side and talking to him. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of pressure at playing quarterback at any level, and there's a ton of pressure on playing quarterback uh, in this league. You know, you know, everybody knows how to call plays, and everybody knows who the quarterback should have hit. It's like I tell them in every meeting. I said it's easy when we got this clicker and we'll watch it on this film. You know, to say what you should have done. We're looking at it from the press box. It's easy. You know, but what did you see? You know, so it's trying to find out how he thinks, his mental approach, uh, and then you got to have a guy that's going to stand in there. You got to have a guy that's got toughness. And, you know, a lot of people think toughness is that offensive line or that back, but your quarterback better have some toughness about him. Will, I'm guessing a couple of weeks ago it was a difficult decision, a difficult time for you and for Brian. How is Brian holding up these couple of weeks? And I'm guessing you still believe he's going to be an asset going forward for this for this program. Well, he's handled it like he handles everything in life first class, you know. And, uh, you know, Brian's an outstanding football coach. He's an outstanding receivers coach he's an outstanding offensive coordinator you know and there's been there were some things that were out out of Brian's control this year that occurred on our offensive football team that he had nothing to do with and it made it very difficult to to be as productive as we needed to be productive but he understands the profession and that's part of it uh, but he's going to be an outstanding offensive coordinator again he's going to be a head coach again he's going to be really successful in everything he does well how important was it for to get Mike on the road obviously right as, after he started to see guys and then how confident and good do you feel about this class with national signing day kind of coming up well I think Colin with an early signing date that's part of it you know you want to be able to get guys on the road to build relationships I don't want a young man to sign you know in December and and and, and you know coach Bobo is our offensive coordinator and he's thinking well I didn't really you know especially at the skill position at the quarterback position I haven't met the guy so I think that was really important to get him to make sure we saw those guys as best we could uh, some of them came in this weekend, which was good to, for him to be able to see those guys. Uh, and you know, good. I, you know, you know, uh, signing dates a marathon, and we're going to finish part of the marathon on Wednesday, and then we got to continue to keep running until till February. But I like where we are. A few housekeeping questions. What's uh, Coach McLennan's current title? How kind of tough was it to move on from Coach Werner, and what kind of led to the change at, at the strength and conditioning? Uh, uh, head coach head spot and mm -hmm. what is kind of your process there right now well we're still working through that process and i think those are all difficult decisions at the end of the day i've got to make decisions on what i think is best for the organization and winning and we talk to our players about it all the time and it's the same with our staff and that's those are the decisions and they're none of them are easy they're very difficult and those are two professionals and outstanding men and, and i hate that sometimes those things have to happen but uh we're going to work through titles with people as we continue to move forward uh, right now this was about mike today and introducing him to y'all Mike, at least right now, do you plan to be in the box or on the sideline calling plays? Uh, I plan to be in the box. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to see that ball, that game. And, and, and when you're on the sideline, you've got to have a guy upstairs that can really give you a picture and, and your terminology of how you do things. And, and right now, I feel like the best position for me uh, is in the press box. And I've called the majority of the games until I became the head coach upstairs in the press box. Now, you know, if you have – sometimes you got a young quarterback or if he's struggling – you know, you might want to come down, but uh, I prefer to be in a press box. And, Will, do you anticipate any more changes on your staff going no. forward? No, none. Yeah, David beat me to my question, uh, half of it. Uh, the other half – You always got two questions. <laughs> <laughs> the other half is um, do you expect any players to enter the transfer portal or do you think everything is set there? I think, well, I think we're fine. Coach Bobo, Josh Hyber, Spurs and Feathers. Um, just along the way, you mentioned how your coaching style has evolved with the personnel. Who are some of the coaches that you've coached with or maybe you had as a player who have coached, who have shaped you as a coach? 
Uh, I've had a ton of ton of guys. Uh, I'd say number one is my is my father that coach uh, referenced early on. He's high school coach uh, in the state of Georgia, and the reason I got into coaching was because of him. Uh, he used to probably be you know my biggest critic and, and, and diagnose what we were doing, uh, you know, pregame and after game. But he still he still watches every he gets on the little app and watches every practice and he'll call and say much but not as much anymore he's got five grandchildren you know he can he consumes himself more with the grandchildren but uh you know uh, Jim Donnan was a you know a big influence uh for me Ray Golf were two head coaches I had in high school I think you know Ray Golf is uh you know he's a guy that recruited myself he recruited Will he recruited Coach Smart uh there's a lot of guys in coaching that, that Ray Golf recruited at the University of Georgia and we're in coaching I owe a lot to him um, you know, Coach Donnan was, uh, you know, a guy that believed in me and gave me my, you know, uh, first first job there as a, as a graduate assistant. And then I spent 14 years with Mark Rick, uh, you know, as a quarterback coach, as a young guy that, uh, you know, basically was his GA there for the first couple of years and gradually turned it over to me and then the offensive coordinator and, uh, you know, went through some growing pains. Uh, and here's a guy that was an offensive guy, but let me go through those growing pains uh, and kind of, you know, become my own man. And, you know, he said, don't try to be me. You need to be who you are. And he had suggestions all the time and, and what we thought we ought to do. But, you know, he, he let me, you know, go out, sometimes go out there and fail. And I think that's the, you know, you know that's the key to, to success sometimes because on the other side of failure is success. And he allowed me to put myself out there and wanted me to put myself out there to grow. Uh, and that's the same thing when you're coaching kids. It's getting, getting them to put themselves out there. You know, a lot of times kids nowadays, they're afraid to put themselves out there because, you know, the, the scrutiny is, is, is very tough. Uh, and they, you know, they play a sport that is, you know, they're visible and you got 90,000 people there every week that are going to critique them. You've got all you guys that are going to critique them and they got to be willing to put themselves out there week after week after week. Uh, but that's the way they grow. Uh, and, you know, so I, I learned a lot from that. Uh, you know, and then I've been around a lot of good coaches that, uh, you know, high school to guys I've worked with uh, that have helped shape. Uh, it's not just me in that room. And that's one of the reasons I was excited about coming here, excited about Coach McClendon and, you know, him him staying. Uh, I've worked with him. I know what kind of coach he is. I know what he's going to, you know, how he's going to help develop those young, those young receivers that we got to get ready to play. I know what kind of guy Thomas Brown is. Uh, you know, that fires me up, you know, to be in the room with those guys. And like I told them, I said, I don't, you know, we all got egos as, as men and want to be good and want to be considered the best, you know, one of the best at what we do. Uh, but at the same time, I, you don't want to let your ego uh, get in the way of trying to be successful in that room. And I, you know, I think, you know, we're going to have a great room. There's not going to be a lot of egos. At the end of the day, we're going to figure out what gives, gives us the best chance to be successful and move the ball. Uh, Coach Bobo, from the kind of the film you've watched, have you at all spotted a Adam Prentice type on this <laughs> roster? And is it is there? You know, Adam Prentice is, huh? I, I, yeah. I watched I watched a couple of your okay. games. Um, he does and, a lot of research. Yeah, yeah. and He's is a good player. And is is that type of player someone you'd you'd like to have in this? Well, uh, you know, Adam Prentice. For you guys that don't know, that didn't do your research, uh, he was a fullback for us at uh, Colorado State. And if you've seen a lot of uh, offenses that I've ran, we played you know with a fullback and had a two back running game. And you know, quite frankly, a lot of teams don't defend a two back running game anymore because they're defending spread. And it's something you know teams don't practice all the time. The fits that you got to fit as a defense first two back. Uh, but there's things that you can do. And you know, I don't know if we have that. That guy on our team you know a lot of times it's a you know at Georgia it was a it was a walk-on linebacker it was a you know it was a guy that quite you know it was a, a quite wasn't fast enough to play linebacker a tight end that you know wasn't quite long enough uh you know so I think you can find those guys they got to be unselfish guys uh, but you, you know, they've kind of guy like Prentice was a guy that was a little bit more than a, you know, a, a six lineman. He could do a lot of stuff. Uh, he could play, you know, a wing for us. He could insert. He could catch the ball. Uh, but I feel like I feel really good about some tight ends that we have on this team. Uh, you know, the last uh, couple, last two years before this, we were a lot of twelve and a lot of eleven. And uh, this past year, because of injuries, we played a lot of twenty-one with Adam Prentice, and he did a good job. So I think you got to adapt to your adapt to what you do, and there's things you can do with a tight end uh, and insert him. Uh, not not as a true fullback, but uh, insert him and, and try to run some zones where you divide the defense. 
Uh, but that's, you know, what we're trying to figure out right now. Uh, that's part of what spring practice is. You know, we'll introduce all those schemes uh, to our offense, our offensive line, our quarterback. Now, we might not have the, the apprentice to do it, and we might not run that scheme, but we'll introduce it in case we do find one. Mike, uh, you've uh, played and coached a lot of games here at williams Bryce <laughs> Stadium. When you think about playing here, what are some of the things that jump to your – to your mind. Well, the last game I was here, we didn't win the game. It was like 38-35, and I catch hell for not giving it to Ty Gurley on the three-yard line there, uh, <laughs> throwing it three, three times in a row. But we got an intentional grounding. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the refs because we don't do that around here, no, right, Coach? No, absolutely okay. not. We love them. <laughs> We got the intentional grounding, but you know the previous drive we had ran it in three straight times. So I was you know trying to be creative and got a penalty and got you know and then we missed the field goal, lose thirty eight thirty five. But uh, what I what you know it's extremely hot here, <laughs> extremely hot. You know I always thought we should break two pair uh, jerseys so a pants so they could change after warm ups because our kids would be drenched. It's so hot. Uh, but the, just how how loud and how energetic the fans are. And we usually play South Carolina early, uh, and it just – I mean, it, it, it I mean the night we played in uh, 12 where we ended up really, really good – we played in the SEC championship game that year, and we got throttled here. Uh, we got thro throttled 35-7. to 7. I mean, we went – we got a tip ball tipped by Holloman, picked it off. Then I think A. Sanders returned a punt. Yeah. And then they had a drive, and with Connor Shaw, it's like 21 to nothing. We got a field goal right before half, but uh, or missed it. No, we went for it on fourth down. It's 21 nothing and a half. Uh, but I remember upstairs, there's kind of thick, there's thick glass in these press boxes. And I, I remember saying, is it loud down there? It looks loud. And my line coach at the time said, you just keep drinking those tight Cokes up there. We're down here in this damn jungle, and it's crazy <laughs> down here, and we can't get a first down. But – I, I just, I, I mean, it's energetic, it's exciting, uh, you know, and I hope, I, you know, we can get them to stand up and cheer for the offense and score a few points. But, uh, you know, I remember that, that 12 game, and we had this great plan to chip Clowney and do all this stuff, and none of it worked. Uh, so the next year we kind of just – we didn't even have a plan. We just ran away from him. We weren't going to chip him. And we spent mo so much time worrying about him, I think we scared our players, to be honest. And he scared them too. Well, well, if you could, uh, can you give us an update on Jalen Dickerson and Devontae Davis, where they are in their rehab, and yeah. if uh, Nick Muse and Spencer Reese and Riddle had their surgeries, how, how those went? Uh, Spencer's going to wait and have his surgery. He's a, a part of the uh, Good Works team that's going to be presented at the Sugar Bowl. Uh, so he's going to have that surgery. I believe, John, it's on January 4th. Uh, no, January 6th, maybe. And then uh, Devontae uh, should be cleared for spring. Uh, we're thinking. Uh, I don't know how much he'll be partaking in the off-season program at this time. And then Jalen Dickerson will be cleared when we get back in January. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he did. I'm sorry. Uh, Nick and Ryan we, uh, both had their surgery and both went extremely well. Mm -hmm. Mike, is there a time frame from when you'd like to have your full offense installed? And I guess is how much input will you have from the other guys on staff as terms of just what you can add? And, and oh input? well, I'll have a uh, you know a ton of input. You know, we started today, you know, going through uh, some base runs right now and getting input of on, on certain things that they did and how they did it and you know how I want things done. Uh, you know, we'll we'll install the whole all you know. Uh, you know, I'd say probably 80% uh, in the spring uh, and then, you know, install the other later. And then we got to figure out, you know, what we're going to be, you know, there a week and a half, two weeks in the, in the fall camp. But, you know, it's not um, – I think you got to you got to you got to install, you know, you know, everything that you might be. Now, there's a ton of offense over there. I've run a lot of offense over the years, but the base stuff will install how we run it out of what formations and what personnel groups can change. But the base stuff will be installed, the base runs, the base concepts, uh, throwing the football. Now, you know, to me, you've got your, your base running game and, you know, what kind of – you know what kind of play action, run action are you going to have off that running game, and then you got your drop back game, and you know you got your tempo. So those are a lot of things that you know we got to consider. And then how much, you know, how much can we handle? Now we're going to handle it all in the spring because we, you know, we meet. 
and we go practice the next practice and we come back and meet and then we have another day so it's spread out over spring so i really like spring because you get to work a lot fundamentally you get to install a lot there's not a game there's not a scoreboard so it's just constant constant teaching and then you can you know you're pulling all those clips back in fall and showing those guys of what they did and how they did it how they did it right how they might not have executed it right so you know we're going to throw a lot at them and then we're going to figure out what we are Will, one more that's a little off topic. Mike mm -hmm. kind of uh, mentioned him earlier, but to carry and Joyner, how how did uh, that postseason meeting go go with him, and what do you kind of envision his role in, in Mike Bobo's offense as? Well, I think we you know we're, we'll continue to evolve, John, as we move forward, and it's exactly what to carry on said to Mike and the conversations that I have. What I need to do to help the team, I want to get on the field and help the football team win. And right now, our offensive staff's going through those things and then evaluating our, our talent and evaluating our personnel as we continue to fit the pieces moving forward offensively and what we're going to look like. And uh, he certainly is going to be a huge part of it, I can assure you of that. Uh, and I'm excited to get him back on the field. Anything else? Right. Before they leave, we're going to get a couple pictures with Alan and Tracy. I know you want to get a photo. Coach and coach. Get your cell phone, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Right.